Alrighty, good morning. What do we got going on? Oh no. Uh, yes, the interwebs. The, uh, the never ending plethora of shitness influencers or fitness shit influencers or fit fluencers or whatever you want to call them. Uh, there is so much BS out in the interwebs that it's not even funny. So if you're looking for something crazy and outlandish, people who don't know what they're talking about, talking about, tune in to the internet and social media and you will find, you will find somebody, I guarantee it. And today, uh, beware of the fitness wannabe influencers. There's no such thing as spot fat reduction or melting fat. I don't know why these people who get a camera, you know, they, they, they get a little camera and next thing you know, they go to the gym for a few months. They might actually even have a good physique, but as soon as they open their pie hole, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's game over. They have no clue as to what they're talking about. It's, it's so disturbing on so many levels. And these people pretend to be fitness influencers. Some of these people are actually trainers and I use that term very loosely because they, you know, uh, we're going to take a look at a guy named Mike who has a DNA fitness and, you know, thank God DNA is reduced to letters because I don't think he would know what that meant as well. But we're going to talk about this and how, you know, there's no such thing as spot fat reduction. There's no melting fat. Uh, there's no changing your fat, as I've heard uh, some other trainers say. You can you can change fat and you can turn it into muscle and you know do a body recomp and it's like that's not that's not how that works. Um, you got to be careful, people. You got to be careful. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this wackadoo right here. This guy is somebody that you need to be careful of, and he's 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 rough. Um, get rid of your love handles. I mean, who doesn't want to get rid of their love handles? It's, it's something that I think both men and women want to do at some point in their lives, unless you're constantly stuffing your pile and don't care about your love handles. You know, maybe you're into that. Maybe, you know, you, you need that, that grip, that hold. <laughs> but this guy here, he is, uh, he's, he's a doozy. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and see what we can see from this guy. So we're gonna we're gonna watch a little video from this guy, and yeah, let's let's maybe we'll pause and see what happens. Let me see if I can get this thing set up here so I can see what's going on. Alrighty, are we ready? Hold on to your hats because you're gonna hear some wild stuff. Okay, uh, boom. Hi, folks. It's Mike back with another video from DNA Fitness. Today we're going to be working on the love handle region, right at the sides of your abs. It's a problem area for both men and women. Trust me, you're not the only one. And although you can't spot reduce fat, you can target and work out on the area that you want fat to disappear from, in the hope that your body will just melt fat away from that particular area. Today we're going to be working on that. It's going to consist of six exercises. Each exercise we're going to be doing three times. The time all depends on you as each exercise, each set will be 15 repetitions. After each exercise, you're going to get 15 seconds rest with the odd 45 second rest thrown in there after a particularly tough set. The day after you do this workout, you will feel it in your abs. Hopefully it's going to make you just a tad sore, but in a good way. Let's get to it. <laughs> with that information there because he goes through he does a number of exercises he does like sit-ups he does crunches uh he does some 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 windmill things it, it's kind of reminiscent of the 1960s of 50s and 60s calisthenics uh he does push-ups which is not not an ab exercise and this guy claims to be dna fitness he he, he does this fitness thing and he uh uh, no, he doesn't do DNA fitness. No, he does do it DNA fitness. This guy is DNA fitness. And so what I want to do is kind of go over some information uh, that... <laughs> 
and kind of explain a little bit about what's going on. Uh, this is this is just more BS. And it, at the very beginning, what he ends up saying is that you can't spot reduce fat, which is actually true. That is 100% true. It has been disproven numerous times that you can't like exercise one area and the fat goes away. So in other words, you know, let's say you've got you've got fat in your face and your neck and your arms and you've got the flabby, you know, stuff in the back fat and then you exercise your abs and then all of a sudden there's no fat around your abs, but then you have fat in your ass and your legs and everywhere else except your abs. Uh, no, that's that's not how fat loss works. It's it's not there is no spot fat reduction. Matter of fact, when we talk about reducing fat or getting rid of body fat, it's through a process, a very particular process, and it's not based off of hope that fat will melt. And that's what we talk about here. First of all, fat spot reduction has been disproven. And then in the very same breath, he hopes to target fatty areas in the hopes that it will melt the fat away. Um, yeah, this fat doesn't melt, Derek Guy. Uh, these two things should be enough for everyone to block and ban this wackadoo forever. Uh, you know, and it's unfortunate because, you know, there's people out there who, you know, they, they get a camera and they go to the gym for a while or they exercise at home and all of a sudden, you know, they did a program or something and now they're going to do their own fitness routines and become an influencer and they're going viral for all the wrong reasons. And <laughs> it's not it's not because of their vast knowledge on the subject of body fat reduction. When we're talking about body fat and losing body fat, what your body does is that you will see fat when you exercise. And most importantly, and we'll get into this a little bit, in a calorie deficit, which is absolutely needed. Otherwise, you're not going to lose body fat. You will lose fat through the entirety of your body. <clears throat> now, there are some places that you're going to lose some body fat that will be noticeable first. Usually, it's in the face and the neck area. Uh, then you'll end up seeing it in other parts of your body, your arms. And then the last place that fat wants to leave is your love handles and your ass. It's in your stomach. It's the And the visceral fat can be, that's a doozy as well. That's the fat that's around your organs. We're not talking about the fat that's between the muscle and your skin. Uh, we're talking about the, the inside the organs. And that can be really detrimental and cause some heart issues. So with that being said, the last place to go for that fat to leave, and we're going to talk about how fat leaves, is that it's from that midsection area, your ass and your midsection. So in other words, you're going to have to be in a calorie deficit for an extended period of time. And uh, yeah, it's you can't exercise that away in, in the hopes that it's going to melt away. The fact that he said... There is no, you can't spot reduce fat, but you can target the area in hopes that it will melt the fat away. That is absolutely crazy. Uh, this guy clearly skipped health class and didn't take any classes in human body or anatomy in college. Obviously, he has no clue in regards to nutrition or even took the time to study on how the body works in regards to losing or gaining fat. It, it's it, And with the advent of the interwebs, the internet, Google search, Surrey, the whole nine yards, you can ask these questions and boom, chat GPT uh, can give some pretty, you know, I chat, I got to hand it off to chat GPT. It has more uh, viable and credible information than this guy when it comes to fat loss. Uh, there is no hope that fat will melt. The body doesn't work that way. It works according to very well-defined processes, none of which he seems to know when it comes to fat loss. But that doesn't stop this wannabe shit influencer with his made-up BS. Uh, the only thing he did in the video was exercise his abs, and by doing some push-ups, his chest and triceps, and maybe, you know, some front delts a little bit, you know, but we're not going to get nitpicky on that. Um, talking about, oh, you'll feel it the next day, and, and it's, it doesn't spot reduce body fat. Matter of fact, um... <sighs> The, the way that you lose body fat is through a calorie deficit, which is amazing because the the most important thing about losing body fat, he never addresses. And you don't even need to exercise to accomplish that. 
Now, when it comes to exercise, it does help with your overall health and it can add some extra um, deficit because you're using up fuel in your body. And if you don't feed your, your body the fuel that it needs to work out, it's going to go to that stored energy, which is the fat. And, uh, you know, with exercise, there's also building muscle. It helps with, you know, things like osteoporosis. Uh, combats against sarcopenia and things like that. And then you have cardio, which is good for your heart health. So there's there's numerous benefits of exercising and having a calorie deficit when you're trying to lose body fat. But the one thing that you should know is that even if you did all these exercises that he showed you, you can still gain fat. And that's if you're in a calorie surplus. So in other words, you can do all the exercises that he's talking about. You won't melt the fat away. You, even if you target those areas, it's, it's not going to go away if you're in a calorie surplus. The most important thing that this guy doesn't talk about is calorie deficit. And there is zero mention of that in the video. Hell, there's people that can lose body fat and not even exercise. I mean, we see it on the 600 pound life. Uh, you know, you got all those big tubby tubby people out there and other people as well. There's other shows where you don't even have to exercise. You just have to eat less than what your body needs for energy so that it goes to the stored energy and uses up what is stored in fat. Because basically what happens is your body says, you know what, uh, yeah, I got I to gotta breathe, I got to do all the involuntary actions, I have to walk and do daily activities, I need X amount of energy to do that. But if you don't feed that to your body, in other words, you're in a deficit, now your body's going to say, well, where's the corn dogs, where's the ho-hos, where's the, the cupcakes and the, and the ice cream and all that stuff? It's like, oh, we, we, we don't have this. You're not feeding the pie hole for me to get that. So it looks around and it goes to the cupboard and it pulls out the fat and it uses the energy stored in that fat. So anyway, uh, yeah, the number one thing for losing body fat, and there is zero mention of this guy. And unfortunately, it's, it's wackos like this who get themselves a camera and they start exercising. And then you remember back in the days of when, you know, if, if let's see if we could pull this up. I think I got the, the video. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And let's just, no, I don't want that. Ah. Since my computer upgraded, it got Apple TV and it's a pain in the butt. And so whenever I open a video, it goes straight to Apple TV. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, it doesn't even have. Let me see if I can drag this in here. Maybe I can drag it in. Can I drag it in? Hi, folks. It's Mike back with another video from DNA. That's not how it works, but that's what this guy says in the hopes that it will melt that fat away. Um, yeah, it's it's not. Hi, folks, it's Mike back with another video from DNA Fitness. Technical difficulties. Where are we? Can we get back to to where we were? I apologize for this. Boom. Let's get back to some normalcy. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's just amazing on what people, the, the BS that comes out their mouth. And this guy, towards the end of it, he says, you know, DNA fitness. And so obviously he's trying to be a fitness influencer. He's trying to get clients. And unfortunately, the sad part about it is that the people that don't know anything don't know that this is BS. Now, in this video, uh, he went and posted this. And uh, what was it? What was the website? Yeah, health and fitness over 40, and he got absolutely raked over the coals by a number of other people, including myself, and it was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, so many people on that page are pretty intelligent when it comes to 
nutrition, when it comes to fat loss, when, you know, building people that are doing, uh, you know, do their selfies and show their progress reports and their before and after. Uh, there's a lot of people who have some great advice and know some good information. On the other side of the coin, you have guys like this who don't know a lot. And unfortunately, it's, it's going to hurt people. It's going to hurt people in the fact that you have somebody that is overweight and are obese and they understand that and they've come to a place and they, they see this wackadoo here and they said, okay, well, if I do these exercises, uh, I'm going to lose body fat in the hopes that it will melt the fat away. Fat doesn't melt away. And matter of fact, when your body uses that fat, in other words, you have a fat cell, there's fat deposits, there's water, there's protein, there's salts inside of those cells. And that, should I go into this? I guess I should. So anyway, you have these fat cells. You have good fat cells and you have bad fat cells. Um, but anyway, basically the fat that you're going to use as your body looks for that stored energy because you're not feeding your pie hole, it takes the, that, that energy from the fat cells and it uses that so it reduces the size of the fat cell. It basically deflates it and uh, the fat doesn't melt away. Fat doesn't change and turn, and turn into muscle. That is the energy. So in other words, it's kind of like carbs is the glycogen and so on and so forth that the body uses to fuel your workouts and your recovery. So when you're in a calorie deficit, it goes to that fat storage, takes that and uses it. But what happens? There's, you know, there's a little bit of protein, there's some salts and some water and so on and so forth. Fat does not melt away in the fact that what happens is fat actually gets expelled through the body as you breathe. And I think it's like 84%, 82, 84%, 86%, somewhere around there is expelled as CO2 when you exhale. And then the remaining 16% or so, whatever the, the remainder is, it ends up that that is expelled through water. And that can be through sweat. It can be through urine and so on and so forth. You know, bleh, you know, you get rid of it that way as well. But yeah, the majority of fat gets breathed out as CO2. Now, the other interesting thing that we need to look at when we're talking about fat is the fat cells don't go away. The fat cells reduce in size. And so what, here's a really interesting thing that obviously this guy doesn't know about is when you build fat, in other words, when you get obese, what they found that as you're a child and an adolescent and get into your 20s, if you're obese as a child, you build and create and make more fat cells because you're feeding your pie hole with Twinkies, Ding Dongs, burritos, and you know whatever else there is. Uh, you know, get your Cheeto rush on and, and just binge on the ice cream. You create more fat cells. And then when you get into your 20s, what happens is, is that that's the number of fat cells basically that you're going to have. Now, you can continue to overeat and you can get more fat cells, but basically it, it, it's, a, it's a hard process to build more fat cells, but you can. But basically your fat cells get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it creates more. Then those are the number of fat cells that you will have for basically the rest of your life. Now, fat cells die, you know, your skin flakes off, your hair falls out, and new hair comes in, new skin cells, and so on and so forth. Fat cells do die, but they are replenished in the body. So about, I saw something I was reading a long time ago, about 10% of your body, uh, the fat cells die, and your body reproduces those fat cells. So you're, you're stuck pretty much with the same amount of fat cells. The interesting thing is that those fat cells are deflated and that's why when you have people that were obese at one time and then they reduce and they lose a bunch of body fat and then all of a sudden next thing you know they boom they balloon up again it's because they're in a calorie surplus and it's because they have all of those fat cells and they're filling up those storage bins think of it that way it's a fat cell is basically a storage bin and you overeat and you're just filling up those bins Whereas if you were lean as a child, as an adolescent, as a teenager, and so on and so forth, you can get fat afterwards. It's not saying it's an impossibility, but you have a better chance of not getting fat if you were lean as a child versus being obese as a child. So it's really interesting here. But the main driver of this is that people who are obese obviously have more fat cells. And fat doesn't, there's no 
the, the fact that he said there's no fat spot reduction and in the exact same breath without a pause, a comma, or a period, he says, you know, you're going to target these areas in hopes that fat will melt away. Uh, if you don't understand the process and you don't understand or even talk about the number one thing to lose body fat, which is a calorie deficit, and you just go straight to exercise, it's not going to work. And you're setting people up for failure. That's, that's what this guy is doing. So unfortunately, uh, as I was trying to make this video last night and I got sidetracked on a bunch of other stuff because I looked at some other videos and he's just, man, he is... Uh, he's a he, he's a doozy. Let's put it that way. He goes into a lot of other things that you know. Oh well, these are the number of sets and reps. You know, he talks about one video. Let me just rant a little bit here. In one video, he talks about well, you can train for endurance and strength and hypertrophy, which is actually true. When he talks about endurance, he talks about people that are bicycle, uh, bicycle, you know riding bicycles, competition, endurance runners, uh, swimmers. He's got videos of, you know, basically, you know, athletes and stuff like that. And he talks about, you know, competitive runners and, and endurance training. And then he goes right into, boom, resistance training. You need to do, you know, so many sets and so many reps. And it's like, that, that will get you for endurance. And it's like, not for those activities. Uh, he, he, he just kind of looks for endurance. And he saw endurance here in resistance weight training, then he saw endurance and pictures of people riding bikes and doing marathons. <coughs> Excuse me, doing marathons, and he's, oh, endurance, endurance, and he just laps them into the same thing. If you were training for marathons and long-distance running and cross-country marathons, you're not going to be hitting the gym much. I don't know if you've seen these people, but they are like sticks, but what they're doing is they're training their cardiovascular system, they're training their body to basically minimize and be the most efficient when it comes to energy consumption over long periods of time. So there's two different types of endurance. It is totally different. When we're talking about resistance weight training, we're talking about how long the repetition is. So if I hold a weight out, you know, at arm's length for two seconds, it's not a big deal. But if I hold a weight out at arm's distance and I hold it for 30 seconds, it's that's a very different thing because now we're talking about resistance training and muscular tension and that tension that is on the muscles over an extended period of time which you can train your body to do which is the endurance that we're talking about there if you want to do endurance that's fine but don't confuse long distance running and cycling and he said you know you don't you don't you know these people that that bicycle and, and that uh, they don't have big muscles and it's like have you ever seen a competitive a competitive racer you know those except for Lance Armstrong we're not going to talk about him because he cheated his ass off you see their thighs and their calves after a race. They are huge. They are pumped to the gills. So saying that they don't have muscles is uh, is a little bit lacking. But then he goes into hypertrophy and he says, well, this is for hypertrophy and 6 to 12 sets. And, and as if doing 6 to 12 sets will only get you uh, hypertrophy, that you'll only gain size and muscular mass, uh, which is absolutely not true. I've actually gone through, and let me see if I can find it here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I've actually gone through. Can I bring this in here? All right. I've got that. The same thing on the other side, 25 and 45. So that's 500. So we're pushing for 500. There's going to be a new PR on the hammer strength wide grip press. So we'll see, see what we can do. We're So anyway, it ends up that, uh, yeah, I basically got three repetitions on that. So when that guy, Mike, he ends up from DNA Fitness, he says, well, if you do, you know, uh, six to 12 repetitions, that's going to be for hypertrophy. And that's what you're going to get is absolutely untrue. If you do six to 12 repetitions, 
you can get, you will get strength gains. Matter of fact, if you do, you know, in the lower one, he talks about uh, strength, um, you know, from like one to five repetitions, you'll get strength gains. But he kind of compartmentalizes it as if when you're doing that hypertrophy range, that you're not going get to get any strength increases, which is absolutely untrue. And I did three to five sets per body part. And I would do that six repetitions, eight, 10, and 12 repetitions, making sure that I was going to failure on each of those sets. So what I would do basically, you know, four sets, sometimes five. Uh, but the thing that he doesn't mention is the amount or the percentage of your one rep max. So if I'm operating at a high percentage, in other words, I'm pushing a lot of weight, I'm going to have lower repetitions, but I could still do six 8, 10, and 12 repetitions for my four sets, I'm going to get some strength gains. And again, there's a big difference between lifting for hypertrophy versus lifting for strength. And so obviously he doesn't know that as well. When you lift for hypertrophy, there's different ways that you can lift. And yeah, obviously this guy doesn't know about that. So, you know, trying to make that seem like, you know, oh, well, you need to do this for endurance, you need to do this for hypertrophy and this for strength. Um, it's a little convoluted because I don't think he understands, and he didn't bring it out, that you will get some hypertrophy. If you do any type of resistance training, weight resistance training, whether it's body weight, cables, machines, kettlebells, whatever it is, um, you know, just as long as they're not Twinkies and Ho-Hos, you will get some muscular mass. You will get some strength in there. But when we're talking about like the difference of power training, strength training, and then hypertrophy and endurance, those are entirely different things. And it also, because like I said, I could do 500 pounds on that hammer strength, but I did three to five, you know, I did like four sets and I would do four or uh, six to 12 repetitions and boom. But it depended upon how much weight that I'm, that I'm pushing in the percentage of my one rep max. And I was able to have a drastic increase in my strength output by doing a higher percentage of my one rep max, which obviously I've looked at his other videos and he doesn't understand that as well. Um, yeah, this guy is, is, is a classic example of what we see today with older people. And, and it's on this page, it was in over 40 people. And uh, as I went back this morning before I made this video, because I was just going to pull up the page and play his video, uh, he took down this video. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, and there was a number of people that were just like, yeah, no, that's not how it works. That's totally wrong. And as I looked at some of his other videos last night, this guy is soup sandwich. Um, he really, really doesn't know what he's talking about. He's taking some some information that he's gleaned off of social media and may, you know, maybe some articles and stuff like that, maybe muscle and fitness, Lord knows, I don't know, but it's not reliable information. And that's, unfortunately, we still see a lot of this today on social media. You will have guys like this and girls that will be, you know, they want to be fitness influencers. They're certified personal trainers that, that don't know what they're talking about. The ones I hate are people like this guy. The ones that I hate are the people that make up exercises that you don't need to make up the exercise because they're saying, oh, we're going to isolate this muscle group here. And then they create an exercise to set themselves apart from everybody else. And it actually takes away from the isolation of the muscle group that they say they want to isolate. And they're pull pulling in other muscle groups to do that exercise. And it's making it not an isolation exercise. So, you know, and, and as far as routines, you know, it's like, well, if you're doing this, what type of routine are you doing? You're doing push-pull legs. Are you doing a full body routine? Are you doing a bro split where you do a separate body part each day for five or six days? Uh, you will get these people that are absolutely clueless because they will say, well, do this exercise. And it's like, well, if we do this exercise and we're doing this routine that you say, you're not giving ample time for rest between your workouts for recovery. In other words, you're burning the candle at both ends. So yeah, when I see people, especially seniors, uh, people over 40, I'm going to be 58 this year. When I see people and seniors making up exercises that is not based on facts or science, studies, meta-analysis, you know, and all of this stuff, 
uh, it's it's absolutely insane. Like this guy here ends up saying, you know, well, for hyper or for endurance training, you need to do 25, uh, 20 to 25 reps or something like that. And it's like, no, that's not true, because actually, let's talk about hypertrophy. Studies have shown that you can do heavy weights with low repetitions and you'll get a good muscle growth response. But it has to do with volume, and the important thing is volume and training to failure or close to it. In all of the studies that I've read, and there's hundreds of them, when it talks about hypertrophy or strength gains, it you have to have appropriate volume and you have to have that training to failure or close to it. Unfortunately, this guy doesn't understand that. But on the other side of the coin, as long as you do more volume with a lower amount of weight with higher repetition, say 25 to 30 reps, and as long as your value or your volume is more than with the higher weight with the low reps, you will still get a good muscle building response from that. So it just goes to show that he doesn't really know what he's talking about. He knows some basic information, but he's not uh, adept or knowledgeable about the different nuances. And especially, especially when it comes to, you know, reducing body fat, he doesn't know the Barney basics. So yeah, be careful of this guy. I would not hire him. I wouldn't listen to him other, unless you just want something to laugh at <laughs> and shake your head and cry on how people like this is the epitome of the movie Idiocracy, which was a comedy and is now becoming because of people like this with a camera is becoming a documentary. Uh, yeah, it's just absolutely insane. So anyway, that's what we got going on. I don't want to belabor this anymore. But if you look at some of his other videos, it's just, they're rough. You know, he's got some good information, some, some correct information, but there's too much misinformation that I could not recommend him at all. Now you might be saying, okay, well, well, who are you to say this? And it's like, well, you know, I spent my time in the military. I was trained as part of my additional duties to be a fitness instructor. I was trained on nutrition and so on and so forth. Um, you know, I'm almost 58, gonna be 58 in a few months and I've got a pretty decent physique. Uh, I did a body recomp, which, let me see if I can pull that up. I did a body recomp for three years because I was skinny fat and what ended up happening is I let myself go. And I had lifted over time. And basically, while I was in the military and I was big at one time, I got injured, uh, some medical problems that I had, injuries from the service. Let me see. Uh, da -da -da. Image, 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 image. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Recomp. Here it is. Boom. So this was basically what I ended up doing. So what I did was a body recomp. And let's get rid of this guy here because we've had enough of him. Um, yeah, I did a full body recomp and it took over three years. And so I started out as 210 pounds, as you can see. I didn't have arms or shoulders or a chest. I had a little man boob action going on there. I had the Dunlap disease. My belly was done lapping over my belt buckle. I had the fat ass. I had the skinny legs. So physically, I wasn't in a good place. Mentally, I wasn't in a good place. Dealing with PTSD, depression, anxiety, and so on and so forth. Self-medication and a lot of bad, dark alleyways uh, just went down some dark roads. It wasn't fun at all. But eventually I had a wake up moment and I went back and during this three year recomp of where I went from 210 pounds to 263 pounds, I studied nutrition. I, I looked at the studies, I read studies on hypertrophy and strength gains and nutrition and so on and so forth to find out all of these things. I looked up on how do you lose body fat because I had some body fat. I had visceral body fat that I wanted and I had fat in my ass that I wanted to get rid of. So I, you know, remembered back in the day being trained in the military on this stuff, but it was like, yeah, I need to dust that off and understand the process of how losing body fat works. The biggest thing, the most important tool is a calorie deficit. So combined with weight resistance training of three to five times a week, and of course, bulking up, 
increasing my protein intake to build muscle. That's an absolute must. You can't build muscle out of nothing. It has to have the building box of protein to do that. And yeah, and then after I hit 263, I cut down to 243, and currently I'm 255. I'm on a little bit of a bulk right now. But it took three years, just over three years, to do this recomp here. And yeah, it's... But you'll also see people that are in good shape that are clueless when it comes to fitness, exercise, knowledge, how to lose body fat, so on and so forth. And unfortunately, there's, there's more of those people out there than we need. And people look at them, they look at their physique and say, oh man, that guy's awesome. And then you listen to what he says, and because they don't know about this stuff, people are enamored and they think, oh, well, I'm going to buy his program and so on and so forth. Um, but when you compare what they say to factual evidence and that has been proven by tests and studies and meta-analysis, you see that these people are, are wackadoos. They don't know what they're talking about. They make up exercises. They make up routines. Um, it's, it's, you know, they lie about, uh, it's just, it just makes you, it just makes you want to throw up your hands in disgust and just, you know, block all of these people. But then you realize that these people are going to be hurting other people that want to get healthier, that they want to lose their obesity, that they want to lose their body fat. And if they listen to people like that guy, Mike, um, they're setting themselves up for failure because you can actually, like I said, you can actually have people, you can do all those exercises that Mike was talking about. You can do them every single day. But if you're eating a calorie surplus, you can not lose fat. Matter of fact, you can still get fat as you're exercising. And again, calorie deficit is the key to losing body fat. And unfortunately, the hips and the ass is the last place that you're going to lose that body fat. So it needs to be over an extended period of time that you're going to be in the calorie deficit. But you need to have a good protein intake to maintain the muscle mass that you want to keep. Uh, you can actually grow and build muscle at the same time that you're losing body fat. That has been proven. It used to be, you know, you can't do that. You have to bulk and then cut, you know, as, as if it was the body can't do two things at once, but you actually can. Uh, but the more muscle that you gain and the more body fat that you lose, the harder it will be to lose that body fat. So there will come a time of where you'll have diminishing returns for building muscle and losing body fat at the same time. And eventually you get to a place of where you're, building muscle will stall or plateau, and then you just continue on with losing body fat. And again, it comes down to a calorie deficit. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just kind of crazy on what we end up seeing. And uh, it's, it's people like that that are setting other people up for failure because he's not telling them about the most important thing, which is the calorie deficit. So, uh, and unfortunately, it's the older people. It's the older people. I've seen a lot of young knuckleheads do this as well. People in their 20s and, you know, the, the, the youngsters and teenagers that are putting out BS as well. But, you know, hey, what I'm really concerned with is because I'm a senior is I see these people trying to be an influencer to seniors and selling them routines and programs. And like that guy has his own DNA fitness thing. Basically, he just copy and pasted some stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just horrible because you will get minimal results. If you're talking with somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about when it comes to basic fat loss or, or gaining fat or how that process works in the body, you're going to get minimal results from their program. Uh, with that said, you will get some results. And what I equate that to is kind of like a spoonful of water. You will have fitness shit, flit, shit influencers. It's like taking and doing their routine is like taking a spoonful of water and dropping it into a swimming pool and saying, see, we filled up the pool. Yes, you will get some strength gains. Yes, you will get some muscle mass if you do any type of resistance training because that's how the human body works. As jacked up as their programs are, you will get some response. Will it be the most efficient and effective and no, obviously not. It's like the people that end up saying, oh, you only do one set per body part and you only work out twice a week. 
uh, for 20 or 30 minutes at a pop. And uh, that, that's enough in a full body workout each day. And, and you only do it two times or three times a week, you know, for 20 minutes a day. And you'll get, uh, what is it, superior hypertrophy and strength gains. And it's like, no, there's studies that show that multiple sets are way better for strength and hypertrophy gains than one single set. It is, there's like nine different studies that I know of that I can post to show that's true. And yet you will have these shit influencers that are making and saying, oh, well, no, it's not true. Mine is, if, if it, their programs were so great, then how come Olympians are not using their program? How come nobody else in professional sports, NBA, football, powerlifting, strength training, strongman competitions, how come nobody is using these programs that these wackadoos promote uh, for one set per body part? You know, lest we forget, let's not even mention that you have multiple muscles within a group and you can train them. So like for the one guy, he ends up saying, oh, you can just do a military press and that's all you need to do for your shoulders. Your shoulders are made up of three different muscle groups, your front, your, your sides, and then your rear delts. So if you just do you know, the military press like this, you're only working your front delt and a lot of your triceps and the majority of people don't know how to flex or contract their front delts. So that's problematic to begin with. But yeah, you're going to have somebody that might have, you're going to get some muscle mass and you'll get some strength, but your side delts, you're still going to, you're going to look ate up like soup sandwich. It's just not going to look good. It's going to look weird. And I've seen people that, they don't train their side delts. They don't train their rear delts. And if you only do one set per body part, now if you're fine with that, then that's okay. But yeah, it's just not a good thing. And they don't realize that your chest is made up. You have your pectoral muscles, but you have three different, you know, you have your upper, your middle, and your lower. They don't worry about that. Your quads, which have four different muscle groups, uh, they don't worry about that. You know, your biceps has a long head and a short head. They don't care about that. Um, yeah, it's just, you will get some results, but it will be very minimal. And if they're hyping it up so much and they say that they're the only ones privy to this and they go, see, look at me and, and look at the results that you can get. The thing is, is that the majority of their lives has been spent doing multiple sets with multiple repetitions with traditional weight training. And that's how they got their muscle mass. Uh, and just going to continue this rant a little bit. And most of these people, the one said wonders that, that they will bring out and talk about Mike Menzer, who was a bodybuilder who died at the age of 49 and complications of steroids. Imagine that. What are the odds? And his younger brother or older brother died shortly after that at a young age as well, because they did massive amounts of steroids. And Mike Menzer also admitted to doing barbiturates speed to fuel his workout. So, his one set per body part thing wasn't really a thing. And he, matter of fact, Mike Mentor, he spent about 10 or 12 years doing traditional body weight resistance training that where he, that's how he got the majority of his muscle mass is doing multiple sets, you know, three to five sets doing, you know, high weight, low repetitions, lower weight, high repetitions and so on and so forth. Uh, so yeah, he's not a real good thing, uh, a good example to put forth. In matter of fact, Mike Menzer, if you read his program, you will do one or two warm up sets at about 70% of your one rep max, and then you'll do one working set. But for some reason in today's social media, these nut jobs that promote their one set per body part reference Mike Menzer, don't even know that Mike Menzer's program, he did two and three sets per body part. Or uh, who's the other guy? Mike Menzer and uh, Dorian Yates. He also, they'll do supersets and then they'll do a working set. So yeah, it, it's just amazing how these people don't read, but they don't care about reading. They care about the hype and saying it's quick, fast, and efficient. It's age strong. Uh, you can get better results and you can be age strong. I mean, what nebulous type of, of, of phrase is that? Age strong. I mean, you can have somebody who's who's 58 years old that can only do like 10 pounds on a dumbbell curl. And then you have somebody else who's also 58 years old who is pumping out, you know, 40, 50, 60 pound dumbbells. So, so what is age strong? Strong for your age? You have people that are in their 70s that are doing squats that are five, six, seven hundred pounds. And then you have other seniors that, you know... Uh, 
you know, you're lucky if you can get them to do 30 pound squats. So, so what, what does that even mean? Age strong. You can be age strong. Uh, it's just hype. And they, they want to give you the best. They hype it up that it's the most effective and efficient means in which you can build muscle and hypertrophy and strength gains. But you, you don't need to put a lot of time into it. You only need to do two workouts a week at, you know, 20 or 30 minutes um, per workout. And that's all you ever need. And it's like, these are the people that pray, kind of like this guy, Mike, that prey on people that don't know anything. You know, the housewives, the women that, uh, you know, are trying to lose some body fat and, you know, they, they're just like, oh, I'm in a slump and, you know, I'm trying to get rid of this and that and whatever and I want to get in shape. Or, you know, the older people, the guys that just don't know and they've got the pot belly and the so on and so forth. So they love the idea that they don't have to spend a lot of time and they can get superior results. Everybody wants to cheat. Everybody wants to cut corners. Everybody wants to lessen the learning curve when it comes to health and fitness. And there's ways that you can do that, but then there's also a line of which you cross where it goes from established scientific facts and processes in which to do that to you cross over into the bullshit zone. And the bullshit zone is where a lot of these people live and they, they live on the hype and they promote the hype because they're selling the hype and that's how they get their money. So when you tell these people and kind of like this guy, Mike, that we we're talking about, when you send them information in regards to that's not how this works and this is how this works. Here's a study, multiple studies and meta-analysis showing that this is how what you need to do for strength and hypertrophy gains and so on and so forth or nutrition and blah, blah, blah. And they reject all of that stuff. That tells me that they don't want the most up-to-date factual information. Why? Because they're selling the hype. The hype sells to the ignorant people that don't know anything. And if they actually, you know, said, hey, well, you're going to have to do two or three sets per body part, which will give you 40 or 46% more in strength and hypertrophy than just doing one single set. Now, now it's like, oh, instead of 20 minutes in the gym, two times a week, now we're looking at, now it's going to be 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. And now you're going to have to do three times a week because you want to work that body part, at least, you know, uh, try to get it work that body part or that muscle group two times per week. So maybe even four times a week. So now the pie in the sky ideal of, oh, I'm only going to spend, you know, you know, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes here for a total of 40 minutes for the entire week and two workouts. Now it's gone from three to four workouts with multiple sets. Oh my gosh, my workout's going to be 45 minutes or an hour, or an hour and a half long. I can't accept that. It's because you want to cheat. But it shouldn't be that way. Your mentality should should be to adopt that lifestyle that will give you the best benefits and the most efficient and effective results. And it should be based on science and it should be based on testing and placebos and muscle biopsies and x-rays and MRIs and DEXA scans. Whereas these, <clears throat> these people like Mike and uh, some other people, they will never have... DEXA scans. They will never have muscle biopsies. They don't have anything that they can reference of showing that their system, their pet routine, which is all hype and smoke and mirrors, is better than established scientific training methods that have been used by professional athletes, uh, sports teams, collegiate athletes, uh, you know, home fitness people and things like that. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's too many of these people out there that are like that. So anyway, I just kind of want to finish this up, this video up. I know it's long and people are like, oh, I don't have time to do this. Those are kind of the same people that don't, they don't want to spend the time in the gym. You know, it, it, it's amazing on how many people have contacted me and said, yeah, uh, I saw your information and I, for your information, disclaimer, I don't charge anything. I kind of work with people as, because I'm retired, retired, so I do a lot of things. And I just don't train people as much as I did. Even before, I didn't train people for money. I just did it for free because I think health and fitness should be free. But I have people that will contact me and say, hey, uh, I'm, I'm overweight, I'm obese, I want to get in shape, I want to gain some muscle, I want to lose some body fat. And when I show them and do an assessment and say, well, here, you know, tell me the foods that you hate, tell me the foods that you like, 
tell me the foods that are just okay, you don't feel any way different any way, shape, or form. What are your favorite meals, cuisines, and things like that? Make up a nutrition plan to get them into a calorie deficit. And then we talk about meal planning. We talk about meal prep to keep them on that nutrition plan. Whether it is a different meal, every single meal of, of every meal during the day, or whether it's the same meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it doesn't matter. You still, you can do it both ways. So you can enjoy some great cuisines, uh, or you can just do the turkey, rice, and broccoli thing, kind of like what bodybuilders do. But I rather prefer that people eat the normal things, but just within a balance so that they stay and it's long, it's long term and sustainable, basically. But then they see that they have to go to the gym and that their workout is going to be longer than 20 minutes. And that, oh, wait a second. Uh, what do you mean? I got to go to the gym at a minimum three days a week. I, I highly suggest four. Four seems to be the sweet spot, but three is the minimal. And they don't want to do the nutrition. They don't want to discipline themselves to go to the gym. And they think that they spent years and I, decades, yay, decades of time of putting body, body fat on and getting obese. They think that, you know, it's not going to take any time and effort to get that body fat off. And unfortunately, that's, that's not how it works. So... And then they leave. You know, they they keep being fat. So what do you do? So anyway, uh, that's that's why these programs and the people that sell the hype and the smoke and mirrors are the quick, fast, and easy with a lot of promises of superior gains in, in hypertrophy and strength and so on and so forth. They really don't know what they're talking about. And they're just selling you, they're selling you a wolf ticket. They're selling you a ticket that that isn't worth anything. You will get some results if you do their routine, but it will be minimal at best. Again, remember that spoonful of water in the swimming pool. Why would you want to do that one spoonful at a time when you can just fill it up with a garden hose or fill it up with a fire hydrant hose? I don't know, you know, but it's going to take time to do it. So anyway, uh, as I ranted on long enough, and this is almost an hour now, so I know some a lot of people aren't going to watch this, but uh, for those that stuck out to the end, be careful of these people that make these promises or companies that make promises quick, fast, as a, as a way that nobody else is privy to this information or working out for your body type. You know, if you're an endomorph, mesomorph, or ectomorph, that's not even a thing either. That was actually something entirely different has, but the marketing hype sounds good. <laughs> one, one last thing, when it comes to the endomorph, mesomorph, and ectomorph, the three types of body fats, uh, three types of body types, uh, you know, fat, thin, and then medium build, muscular build, or whatever, that was actually a psychological thing that some guy came up with, and I forget his name, but it had to do with morals and intelligence and trustworthy. And, and you know, the skinny guy was always kind of like the skinny guy, kind of looked like a rat. And he, he was really unscrupulous and he's kind of like a thief and, and things like that. And then the big fat jolly guy, oh, 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 he was always jolly and happy and so on and so forth. And then the muscular guy was the hardworking, the good work ethic. It, it had nothing to do with health and fitness. It was all about trying to label people and their morality and their intellect by what they look like on the outside. And we know that that isn't, that's not a thing, you know, and even and even to the point of intelligence. But the health and fitness people said, hey, if we can get a targeted, specialized workout routine for your body type versus just a routine that, that's for everybody, it doesn't matter the body type, you will, people will choose the one that's for their body type because they think that's a thing. But in reality, uh, and a guy contacted me, I just wanted to leave with this, is a guy contacted me, he ordered a program from B-Shred that has the body type thing. <coughs> and unfortunately, he got the wrong workout routine. So he got the one for, uh, he was an overweight guy, so he got the mesomorph one, but he ended up getting the one for the skinny guy. And he says, no, I got the one for the ectomorph, you know, the skinny guy one, I'm, I'm kind of the bigger guy. Uh, the company sent him the other one for free because there was some type of mix-up. Now, this was a, a while back. He looked at the two routines. They were exactly the same, the exact same routine, same exercises, 
bench press, you know, wide lat pull down, sit ups, legs, you know, squats, a whole nine yards were the exact same for both body types. And it, it, it even goes so far as to say, you know, well, here's, here's workouts for women, here's workouts for men. No, a bench press is a bench press. Yes, women have more uh, muscular uh, in their lower body, more muscles in their lower body than men do. Men have more upper body strength and so on and so forth. Generally, uh, there are exceptions to every rule. But basically, yeah, a bench press is a bench press. A dumbbell curl is a dumbbell curl and a leg press is leg press. It, they're all the same. Your sex is not going to say you're not going to do this exercise because of your body type or because of your sex. Um, it, it's just not a thing. So anyway, <coughs> that's what we got going on. Uh, so I wanted to cue you in on all of this and tell you to be careful of what's going on with these wackadoos out there. And yeah, especially Mike. You know, in the hopes of melting body fat, do these exercises to target the area of where that body fat is and the love handles. But what did he lead off with? Spot fat reduction is not a thing. But he hopes that it will melt fat away. But that fat doesn't melt. So anyway, so that's what we got going on. Uh, today is a workout day. Uh, so I've got a few minutes to kind of slam down a shake, get to the gym, work out, and we will see you on the next video. Peace. A lot of nut jobs.